Our focus now is on the featherweight division as we take a look at our Corona tale of the tape. Corona, who invites you to find your beach. Oscar Escondón, Tuxtu Nayambayar. You see that Escondón is eight years older than Nayambayar. And look at the height difference, a seven inch height difference, but the reach is identical. Ladies and gentlemen, here from Biloxi, Mississippi, Premier Boxing Champions now features 10 rounds in the featherweight division. Your referee in charge when the bell sounds is Keith Hughes. Introducing first fighting out of the red corner, he comes in wearing the black and the silver. As a professional, he's perfect. Nine bouts, nine victories, eight of those coming by way of knockouts. Fighting out of Lombardor, Mongolia by way of Los Angeles, California. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tukstuk Kinto. Across the ring, his adversary fighting out of the blue corner. He comes in wearing the yellow and the black. As a professional, his record stands at 25 wins. 17 of those coming by way of knockout against three losses. Hailing from Torlima, Colombia. He is the former world title challenger. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros presentando Oscar El Guerrero Escandón. Hi, fighters, y'all already giving you instructions in the dressing room. Mind you, listen to me at all times, shake hands, good luck, and God bless. It's our co main event, Tuxtu Niambayar against Oscar Escandon. You know the gentleman quite well that is in the corner of Escandon, Robert. Yes, I do. You know, been in the gym with him the last uh, eight weeks. You know, he's did everything he had to do to be ready, ready for this fight. Um, you know, let the chips fall where they may now. Escandon, trains by Robert's father, Ruben Guerrero. Oscar Escandon and Tuxtu Niambayar. Niambayar looking to improve his record to 10 and 0. But he has Escandon to deal with. Ray Flores, Caleb Plant, alongside Jordan Hardy as well, here in Biloxi, Mississippi on this Memorial Day weekend. Guys, I love the featherweight division, Caleb, because it is so fast, and 126, I think, is one of the most loaded divisions in all of boxing. Absolutely, a lot of superstars, a lot of big names in the division. Um, a lot of big matchups coming up, like we talked about, um, Marez and Santa Cruz, <coughs> Santa Cruz yeah. June so, 9th. yeah, these guys could be a potential matchup for the winner of that, depending on who, you know, gets their hand raised tonight. Well, last week, Gary Russell Jr., a very impressive performance over Joseph Diaz. Uh, you have a new champion with Josh Warrington as he upset Lee Selby. Uh, Carl Frampton is still there as well as Niambi are starting off. And look at the height difference, guys. Seven inches is the disparity between Niambi and Escondón. Yeah, Niambi is throwing a good jab. You know, he's working that jab and picking his shots. He's going to work really early. Absolutely. There's no secret tonight who wants to do what. Of course, Escondón, he's going to want to get in the pocket and try to break. Um, Nyambayar down, and Nyambayar is going to want to be sticking and moving, you know, keeping distance between the two, trying to, you know, pick them apart. You know, the one thing about both of these guys, Escondona and Nyambayar, they're both Olympians, you know, so they got, you know, they got that Olympian experience, and to see them come out and, you know, when it goes on from here, it's nice. Definitely, definitely a, a good amateur pedigree. Nice jab by Nyambayar. He's really mixing in and varying his attack. He's trained by John Pullman. This is their second fight together. Before that, Nyambayar was with Joe Goosen, who's been in the corner with Diego Chico Corrales, John Molina, along with the Ruelas brothers, Gabriel and Rafael, back in the day, Michael Nunn and Joel Casamayor. I had done some work with Joe Goosen also. Joe Goosen also, he was an oh. open right hand down. I mean, he got hit and fell, but it seemed as if he was just off balance. His right leg was a little too far behind his left leg. Got hit with the right hand behind the head, you know, behind the ear, right on the ear. And, you know, something to the canvas. That's the eight count. And Escondon, this is a big round for him now based on that knockdown. I think he's made an error, but again, we'll take a look back at it. 
And an uppercut that lands for Niambiar as Escondon moves forward. Yeah, Niambiar started this round really good. You know, boxing, mixing it up, up and down. You know, changing his direction. And that's how he got caught with that shot, that knockdown. Final moments in round one between Tutsu Niambiar and Oscar Escondon. Hi. And here is a look at the knockdown in the opening round. Welcome back to PBC on FS1. Oscar Escondon dropping Niambayar in the first. Guys, let's take a look back and revisit it. And there you see Escondon. We looked at it before the break, and it appeared as if it was a legitimate knockdown. So Keith Hughes probably called it correctly. Yeah, he landed that overhand right, and it was right on the button. So, you know, he did a great call. Seems as if it was a bit of a, you know, a balance issue involved in that. It didn't seem if it was hurt or, you know, stunned or anything. It just seemed to be off balance. Wes Condone, when we asked him about dealing with the height difference, he said, I'm used to fighting guys that are taller than me. This is just another big guy that I have to chop down. I am by R coming out, coming out, doing the same thing he was doing in the first round, boxing well, good punch selection. Do you think that a power puncher in the Ambayon, he was a silver medalist from Mongolia in 2012. Many people thought he was robbed of a gold medal, but that he's going to fight a more erratically because of the fact that he's dealing with a 10-8, or do you think he'll still settle into his game plan? I think it's just who he is. You know, he came out the first round swinging just the way he came out the second round. You know, he, he mixes him up very well, throws a body, you know, comes back to the head. You know, he comes with that straight right hand. He does a lot of good work in there. This one's scheduled for 10. Really appreciate all of you joining us here on this Memorial Day weekend. We thank those men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice in all those United States, those in our United States Armed Forces. We thank them so much for their tireless commitment to our great country. And Escondon and Niambayar, looks like the feeling out process, guys, has dissipated, but Niambayar is sticking with his fundamentals of the jab followed by the right hand. Absolutely. There wasn't too much of a feeling out process to begin with, but, you know, these guys are standing toe-to-toe, -to -toe, not a whole lot of, you know, feeling each other out, standing around, looking at each other. Uh, it's definitely an action-packed fight, so exciting for the fans and exciting for the crowd here tonight as well. That's one of the nice things about these featherweights is, you know, there's always action. You know, the hands are flying, their speed combinations come in faster. And, uh, you know, these guys are really throwing some leather. You know, you have Escondon who's throwing those big right overhand rights, and then you got MBR who's throwing nice body shots and with a lot of power on his punches. Well, and the fact that these guys are so quick, I, I mean, you look at coming up June 9th, you have after Maris Leo Santa Cruz. Ooh, and nice uppercut. And that, oh my goodness, and down goes Escondon with the right hand. Beautiful shot. He's been throwing that uppercut all night. He finally found a home for it right on the chin and did some damage with it. There's a reason why just one guy has lasted the distance with the MBR. It's because of power like that. And now the MBR sets him down again with the right hand. The one thing that the one thing that Escom Dome's doing wrong is he's getting up too fast. He's not taking the eight count, so your legs are not 100% under you. Scott Escondon, not once, but twice in the second. Yeah, he caught him with that nice uppercut that put him down. And then he hit him with that straight right hand also that put him down for the second time. And as we spoke in the last fight with Rosario and Justin Deloach, you know, Justin not taking that full time, what Robert Guerrero spoke on, Escondon getting right up. It's that warrior in him, you know. A lot, the smartest thing to do would be able to take your time, take the take the eight count and, uh, you know, ease your way back in. But, of course, with him, he gets right up and he's, he's wanting to go back for more. Well, Escondone is a fighter. That's point blank. I mean, he, you know, he went ahead and he was stopped by Gary Russell Jr. when he challenged for the world title over a year ago. And he stated that he learned a lot in that fight. He actually pulled his back and was dealing with some injuries. But he said Russell was the better man. And right now, big right hand down. Another right hand. Escondone again. That sledgehammer right hand for Tutsu Niambiar. There's a reason why those that behind the MBR feel that he will be a world champion sooner rather than later. And if he 
continues to look like this, it will certainly could very well come to fruition. A big right hand, down goes Eskandun for the fourth time in the fight. Now Yambayar is doing a great job of keeping this distance. Even though he knows he has him hurt, he's not jumping on him, he's not smothering himself, he's making sure he's keeping his distance, keeping him on the end of his punches, using his rock bats. Beautiful work. Another right hand. What Eskandun needs to do is tie him up just like that. Now let him get off. Big Love the distance in the Ambayar. Love the distance. And this one is over. Tinsta Ambayar vanquishes Oscar Escondon here in the third round. And my goodness, he continues to look impressive. Very impressive. Yes. Fundamentals, very impressive distance. Even though he knows he had him hurt, he knows he wanted to get him out of there. He didn't jump on him and smother himself. Yes, his hand speed and his power also were, were very impressive. They believe that Tukster Nyambiar can follow the blueprint of Sergei Lipinets, who became a world champion after just 13 fights. Yeah, so he came, you know, just took out an ex-champion. You know, Eskandon was in great shape. I seen him in camp all, all, you know, throughout the whole process. And he was ready for this fight. You know, he got caught with a great shot. The one thing that he didn't do was he never took the eight count. So once you get up, you know, your legs are still rubbery. You need to be able to, you know, stay down, take the eight count, and then also tie up. But, um, you know, being a warrior Escondone, he just came out and, you know, wanted to keep fighting. And the thing is with Niambiar, he did not let Escondone off the hook. He continued to go back with that right hand, straight punches, did not get erratic. Everything was with pinpoint accuracy. Absolutely methodical. He was in control, you know, focused, zoned in. He didn't jump on him, smother himself, swinging for the fences. And that's a testament to, I think, his amateur pedigree. Yes, I mean, everything was calculated. All his punches were right on point, especially when he had Escondon rocked. You know, he knew what he wanted to do, and he knew how to set it up and land the perfect shot to put him back down. We will come back and get the official time. Tutsu Nyambiar stops Oscar Escondon. PBC on FS1 returns right after this. Welcome back to PBC on FS1. Tutsu Nyambiar finishes off Oscar Escondon. Guys, let's revisit it and take a look at the power punching ability of the man known as King Tug. As you see, Tutsu Nyambiar take a look back and this was the night on round one. But this is Nayambiar as he finished things off here in the third. Right hand keeping his distance right on the end of his punches. He's real sharp. Another rock back right hand. Real sharp on him. You know, calculated nice right hand right down the pipe. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes one minute, 18 seconds of the third round for your winner by way of knockout and still undefeated.